Would you mind if we backed up a little bit and talked about some of the Sabbath records? So just, just, just your reaction well, looking well, back on. I mean, you mentioned that Paranoid, that yeah. that, that track. I mean, I thought that album was was but incredible. It, I mean, for its time, we didn't realize at the time we were writing all this stuff. It was just uh, we just thought, well, try this way, and we just it was just purely a four guys from the back streets of Birmingham. So they said, like, let's have a go. Let's do it sort of real heavy and sort of. No, no sort of smoothness, no, all the rough edges and bang it out and see what happens. And you know, that's what people want. That's what people want to hear. They don't want to hear. I mean, if, you want, if you're a Pink Floyd fanatic, don't come and see Ozzy Osbourne on Black Sabbath. If you're, a, if you're an Ozzy Osbourne fan, don't go and see Pink Floyd. It's just different. It's variety. Right. And we didn't realize at the time that when, when, when writing that album, like War Pigs, um, the original title for War Pigs was going to be War Pigs, which is a, a black magic party. It's a, a certain night in a black magic film. But they have this night called the War Pigs night. And we thought that's a bit too heavy to put out, so we're going to reflect in this society. Mm -hmm. So we just changed it around, called it War, war Pigs. We realized about that, that people sort of sending kids to war. And we mm -hmm. didn't realize at the time, we never been to the States, how many kids it was affecting in the States who were trying to get out of the draft from Vietnam mm -hmm. at the time. We just totally, no, it was totally accidentally stumbled over. Really? When you went in to do the first album, is were those tunes that you've been performing live? Uh, Sabbath, yeah. the, the Black Sabbath album. Oh yeah, we've been we've been doing sort of like uh, virtually the first album I did with Black Sabbath. It took twelve hours to record. Did it really? It's funny, I'm playing it. Let's put it out. It's incredible. Was uh, there, there were a lot of bands kind of around Birmingham at that time? Wasn't there? Birmingham, I mean, somebody said to me the other day, you know, out of a lot of the big bands of the 70s, at least maybe one, two, or three, or, or the whole band were, were from Birmingham, and Zeppelin and two Midland guys, John right. Bonham and Robert Plants. Right. You'll find a, a lot of mid Birmingham people in bands. For some reason, I don't know. You don't know. I mean, it's, it was like in the 60s that Liverpool was the thing. I was saying the seventies, a lot of it comes from Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Um Master Reality. Master Reality was uh, the turning point. That was the last real Sabbath album as far as I'm concerned. Then we started to progress into sort of Sabbath bloody Sabbath where we started to get chemical in the studios and use synthesizers and and go sort of over tracking and double tracking and treble tracking and backwards symbols and standing in a battle wars with a fucking bag of coal in your mouth and so on. It's all the investigation period that was. It's just, it just and it's like the, like the guy that invented the fucking thing that couldn't stop growing, you know, it just went from that into sort of work. Like from record from, for instance, the first albums, which were the quickest albums, which were the biggest selling albums of Sabbath. To the, the later hours, which just took forever to record, which didn't sell up nearly anywhere near. Mm. There's something in that world. If you use the frets, if you get a tune and it's lively, if you work on it, it's like you, 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 you have a record player and you hear the same song every minute of the day for like three months. You'll fucking hate it at the end of it. You think, Jesus Christ, you know, I have to. It's like at one time, every time you turn the radio on, you had the Eagles on. To the point that everybody, I think everybody sort of served from eagle at the end. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's overkill. Yeah. Master Reality was the last album that you, you used in Roger Bain also. Roger Bain, I, I, I can't remember now. I think, uh, yeah, Roger Bain, yeah, the last album we used Roger Bain, then we used Patrick Moon and Bobby right. Um did the band have much to do with the production of those first three records? They weren't credited with the production. No, we, not really. No, we not at all. And, and, and I'd be alive if I said so. We just all we did was just put the secure little effects on you and push the buttons, and we played the music. You now the, the, the production of it is, is one side of it, but if the music's strong enough on its own anyway, it's got the vibe. It'll go anyway. All you got to do is get an equal balance. Like this live album, I mixed it in two days. No. Basically mixed it in two days, we went for the mix down with three so I did the whole thing in five minutes. Oh, yeah. Recorded it in so I mixed it in five minutes. You specifically went there to record a live album? Yeah. From the States. Were, were there other places where you would also been recording? Well, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of recordings of this with Randy on which I, I think it's it's kind of 
I felt quite bad about putting it out with Randy on because the record company would have been would have been Speak of the Devil featuring the late Randy Rhodes, you know, which I didn't really want. I think it's sick when people do that because all you're cashing in is on someone's death and you're selling that record on someone's dead body. Do you not agree? Oh, I do agree with you. So I just scrapped the whole idea with Brad and Tommy and, and Rudy and we just did it on our own. We just did it. There's no overdubs at all. Really? No overdubs at all, so I'm straight in the door. What, what, the time out the thing, what was in the, in the box? Yeah, that was it. It's great. Um... There's been, there's no need to do any overdubs, because like, you've got machines. You can, equally, you can get the same effect as overdubs, you understand? And it's like, I want to say overdubs, double tracking. You've got, like, you've got an AD chain machine, you know, so it's an automatic double tracking machine. Which I always use on my voice on stage, anyway. Do you? Yeah. Tickets are sound, that gives a better quality for the Have you been using that for a while on your voice on stage? Oh, for ages, for Have years. It? So it makes it, it makes it sound a lot fully on me. Do you, do you play any guitar at all? No, I don't even play a fucking triangle. <laughs> I play a little bit of harmony, but... Um... um Sabbath Bloody Sabbath album? That had moments. It was, I quite liked the album, but it was like a studio album. It wasn't an album that we could do live on stage. Because it, I mean, there's some, there's some tracks on there that are good still. I mean, we could never have done Spiral Architects on, on the stage. It was really, not unless we just play around a fucking orchestra. I mean, I always like to, on, one, on, 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 an, on an album that I do, I always like to do one studio album, like on, on Diary of a Madman, and it's like, track Diary of a Madman. And, and it's like, and always, it's always like one tasteful, like, sort of musical track with like a few string effects or something. Mm -hmm. But now with these machines, I've got these good keyboards, you can, you can basically get the same effect on the stars. with these like string machines and these Japanese sort of development. It's so near enough as to the uh, studio. Mm -hmm. Whereas the early days of Sabbath, all you had was a melody on this fucking tape kit break, and then you'd be, oh, 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 What are your feelings about the post Ozzy Sabbath albums? Which mean the, the, the albums that they did after you left? To be perfectly honest, and this is not without not trying to sound bad, bad vibes against it, but I, I, did, I didn't think it remotely resembled Black Sabbath at all. I think it, it resembled more Richie Blackmore's Rainbow than it Sabbath. It certainly, it was the voice. It's like if I suddenly join Richie Blackmore, Richie Blackmore, it sounds like, it sounds like Black Sabbath. It's the voice. I mean, you don't go down the road singing, oh, yeah, that's, that's a great riff, it's a great drum, drum sound, the cymbal sounds, we're going to boom, boom, boom. You go down singing the song, you know. So, like, if, so it's like if I was to join the Frank Sinatra band, it would sound like, a, 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 it wouldn't sound like Frank Sinatra, you know, because the voice is what you listen to, you know. How different is it being? On your own, as opposed to Sabbath. Well, I mean, you must have more, much more control now than you have with Sabbath. It's, it's, it's the, it's a lot, it's a lot of difference between going in a boxing ring with your hands tied behind your back and going in without with, with a boxing gloves on, you know. Because uh, now it's like I'm totally free of it. I don't have to answer to anybody by myself. And if I say I'm not going to do this tour, I'm not going to do this work. I suffer whereas before. I mean, you, it's, I mean, I remember when we did the California Jam one. The band said, we're not going to do this. I said, you're crazy. We haven't been on the road for like three or four months. So we're going to get, we're just going to burn us. And this is our only opportunity to so a lot of people can see us in a short amount of time. In one fell, one gig. So like millions of people can see us and realize that we're still surviving as a band. Otherwise, you've got to go in the road for another six months and play all the time. Whereas at one gig, we'll televise all the time. And the last minute, they said, yeah, okay. So we flew straight into Los Angeles. Rehearsed that we hadn't played together for 
months and months and months. Got it, got it at the theatre, rehearsed, went straight down there, did the gig, and it was great.